I don't have any questions about that. So the course is we start at ninth grade as nutrition and food science that most of you have done. And then we move up. Culinary one is grade 10. Culinary two is grade 11. And then three and four is a block class. So this year right now is our first official block class. that so we finally got it the way we want it. So we have the kids who are seniors um, for two hours a day, third period and fourth period. And it should always be that way because we start lunch at 10 o'clock, which is right after or 1030 ish, which is right after um, third period. So the threes and fours get all the lunch products ready and then they start serving the lunch in Lake U Cafe. Um, so Lake U Cafe, like I was just talking about. Um, so Miss Tina is there um, every morning we open up. Do I have any culinary twos in here? On our twos right now. Oh, yep, Leanna Lee. So Leanna Lee's in my first period class right there. And so she, um, her class will work in the morning and start opening up. So they get all the items ready for the salad bar. We have like, I don't know, 13, 14 toppings, whatever it is for the salad bar. Um, they get all the lunch bar, the sandwich bar ready also with the ham, the turkey and all of that. And then um, the threes would come in. Any threes in here? Um, the threes come in and then they would make whatever we're having for lunch. So tomorrow is spaghetti, I think, and meatballs. Um, is that tomorrow? Spaghetti and meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs. So they'll come in and make those products and then serve it that day. Um, we also do deliveries for Lakeview Cafe. So the students are responsible for going across the way to the district office. They go to the school and go and pass out the, um, the items that teachers have delivered. Oh, I introduced you already. Hello. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you later. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so that's what they would do with um, Lakeview Cafe. It's just a great experience for them to get that business side. They get to um, interact with customers. They work the cash register. They work the back of the house, the front of the house. So it's just an overall great opportunity for them to um, have that experience. I, I like introduced you already. So this is this is Mr. Bachelor. Uh, he's our AP for culinary, and he's over um, the ninth graders this year. All the ninth graders. Four, <laughs> they've been very well behaved. Mm -hmm. our, our upperclassmen have not been. So, uh oh. Uh, right now, the uh, I can't say I can only speak volumes for that. Why should I just speak it up? Uh, <laughs> no, they've done very well. But uh, when I got here a little early, but I had to replace the roof. I had a meeting. Welcome back. These are our returning. Yes. These are our veterans. And, and we have one new student right there. <laughs> yes. so these are our veterans, the ones that we expect a lot out of this year. I'm going to hold the chefs to the fire this year to make them. That, uh, that we get you guys into the kitchens a lot more and ramp up and get you guys working. It's really, we're at that point where we're ready to take off. We've got Believe it or not, our culinary program right now has more students than our international baccalaureate. Very proud of that. We've worked very hard the last few years to really rebrand and work to get bigger. And uh, we're just going to get better and better and have more opportunities and give them more chances to do things. So I'm excited about the direction we're going and I look forward to uh, getting the listeners to young adults get their college career in life ready. Life part is so important. And if they learn nothing else, they leave us such a comfort. Whoever they end up with, they have a huge advantage for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions about um, Lakeview Cafe or the Surf Safe exam? Any, any of that? Yeah, so anyone that works for Pasco County Schools, even if they're at a different school, they can order from us. So the district, I mean, they're right there, so we're very fortunate to have them there. So they just walk on over or we deliver um, here at Lakeview Cafe. Teachers can also order. We only get 30 minutes for lunch. So if we get, you know, the kids can walk over their food, they can order here. If there are teachers that are here from a different school having a meeting, and they can also order. Um, we also do catering. So you can see the kids are there in our commons room um, in the main school. And uh, we do caterings all the time. So we have one coming up for the college fair. 
We have one coming up for the SMARTS group. It's a retirement group. Um, and they come in with about 30 to 40 people and have lunch during the daytime. We have catering events on the weekends, at night. I feel like I live here. I keep telling them to get me a Murphy bed for this room because we are here all the time. On, on Tuesday, I didn't get to see my own kids until 9 p.m. So um, it's just, it's just a, we have lots and lots of opportunities for the kids to get their hours, which we'll go over in a couple of minutes. Uh, but we, we open up to anyone. So if you even want to have um, a function here with your you know, work company, you can just tell us and then we have it for you. It's a minimum of 10 people. Uh, we pick menus. We're pretty reasonable uh, with our prices. And you can come here. Mr. Bachelor approves it. And you have your function here. Yeah. Okay, nice yeah. So, um, oh, we have Jenai. Is in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is from a catering that we did um, here on campus. This was in the common area. Um, and Janai was one of our um, our older students that came to help us serve past hors d'oeuvres. She loves it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she does a great job. She does a great job. She kept saying, Chef Cooper, nobody's taking what do I away do? the stairs. <laughs> Just keep moving. Keep Just keep moving. Yeah. Would you like a spring roll? Would yeah. you like a meatball? <laughs> they don't want to talk to people that much. So yeah. we got to push them out of their comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so program expectations, I mean, you know, the biggest things that we have concerns with that we ask our parents to help us with um, to reiterate, you know, certain things to our students when they're at home is A, taking their uniform home and washing it, please, <laughs> remind them as much as you can, because we say it all the time, and so they, I think they tune that out from us at this point. Um, we even go so far as to have them post pictures of their empty lockers as an assignment in my learning to make sure there's nothing in it. And even that still doesn't help. So we, we try to think of everything we can. Um, but yeah, so you know, they're, they're, we do expect that they have their uniform daily, that they're wearing their uniforms, they're keeping them clean. You know, those are all things that aren't, shouldn't be a surprise at this point. Um, behavioral expectations, you know, in, in years past, we've had some concerns with, um, different behaviors happening, not just around the school campus, but specifically in this building. Um, one of them being in the locker rooms, you know, during the times where they're dressing out, either at the beginning or end of class. Um, students sometimes throughout the day will come in to the back of the building and they'll use the bathrooms or they'll sit on the floor in the bathrooms and eat lunch. With everything around the building that we have going on, we're not always in and out of those bathrooms on that side of the building. Um, we do have more presence from Corporal, which we're going to have a video play next for you from Corporal Wynn. Um, and our discipline assistants are coming through far more often. I'm sure our kids have noticed that as well. Um, but one of the things, you know, again, that hopefully, you know, you guys can help us reiterate to them is making sure that when they're not in culinary, they're not supposed to be in the building loitering per se, um, because it is hard to keep students that aren't even in culinary out of the building. So every, every little bit that our students can do to help, if they're not in class or coming to speak to one of us or here to volunteer for catering, um, during other points during the day, kids like to come use these bathrooms over here and we really discourage that. Uh, the biggest thing from Corporal is uh, we've got stop signs like these posted on doors to those bathrooms and other areas of the building. Um, and we've worked very hard to communicate to our students both in the program and outside the program, that if you are caught in any of those areas, it is an immediate referral for being in an unauthorized area. Okay, that's just in an effort to keep the building safe. We are the only two, well, there's three adults, but Tina's always in Lakeview, so she's got that whole side, you know, covered. Um, but there's a lot of the square footage in this building for us to keep eyes on, lots of rooms and doors and, you know, opening the doors to the front of the building and let their friends in. I, I don't, you know, they, they do that from time to time, so. Um, you know, keeping our building safe is is, is obviously very vital. Um, volunteer hours, is that, that's um, another slide, right? So my PASCO Connect, everything that we do is on my learning. So you will go on my learning, you have a parent observer account so that way you can see exactly what they're doing. I was just doing grades while we were waiting um, in the space that we had. So uh, please look on there. Every single week you'll see the updated grades uh, for your student if you see that they're not finishing their work, if you could just get on them for us. Uh, the assignments are open for only two weeks. So you have two weeks to get an assignment done. 
we give plenty of class time to finish an assignment. If we see that the time is not enough, like we misjudge, then of course we will always extend that and give them more time. So, but my learning, um, everything is on there. The days that they're going into the kitchens, um, you know, turning in their syllabus, everything is on my learning. So catering and volunteer hours. Um, we had opportunity today for kids to stay after school uh, just to help, you know, clean up. We tried out some oatmeal cookie recipes, you know, fall's coming, so we want to get some new recipes going. Um, we have tons of opportunities for them. We had a catering actually today at five o'clock at the district office where kids were able to um, help with that and bring some food over. So the students are supposed to have 200 hours if they want to be a full completer. So they have the serve safe, um, they have good standing in the class, and then they also need 200 hours. So the 200 hours can be 100 hours of work hours in the food industry at a fast food restaurant, at Publix, um, it could be at a food truck, something with food, and then 100 hours of volunteer. It doesn't have to be here, but it just has to be somewhere with food. Uh, it could be serving dinner at a church on Wednesday evenings. It could be volunteering with your uncle at his food truck, something to do with food. If you are interested in that, and the students are interested in that, they get a paper from us uh, so we can keep record, a record of their hours. So once they reach 200 hours of either 100 work, 100 volunteer, or 200 volunteer, some people just, some kids just don't um, want to work or you won't allow them to work, so they can get all volunteer if they want to. Um, we sign off on that, and then towards the end, their senior year, they will um, have all their requirements, and then they get the cord for graduation, which is resembles fire. Any questions about that? Hours or anything? Yes. Um, they just get it from us. We have a paper for them to sign. They give it to. They get it from us, and then they turn it into uh, Mrs. Cologne. She's a career specialist, and she keeps record of it. So this one um, I've been talking about since the day we started school last Wednesday um, and the one that we had on Tuesday night too. So this one just went out by word of mouth. Uh, the next ones will go out on a sign up genius and we have Remind. So we send it out on Remind. So if you want to get on that too, you can. Uh, we also put it on the Facebook page. We put it in the announcements on My Learning. We put it on the bulletin. We put it everywhere. <laughs> we want kids to, to come in. Um, some days we get 20 kids like today. Um, other days we may get two kids. So, yep. It's a separate, it's separate, yep. So if they want to be a completer here and Bright Futures, they would need 300 hours, which is very doable. So like the kids today, like, can I, can I use these, Dati? Okay, so she just started, she's a year one, uh, but she just started here last week and she just stays 20 minutes sometimes after school waiting for her mom to pick her up in the bus loop and she does things for us here. Um, like, you know, whatever, making, she did cookies today, but whatever it is, she just does something in here for 20 minutes and she probably now, if she does it 20 minutes every single day, she's going to get, she's going to get the out and then plus come to caterings and stay with us here for a hundred hours. Um, it seems like, or five hours after school, then she'll get, she'll definitely get her hours and she's already a year behind most of the other kids who are here for nutrition. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play um, the video that Corporal Wynn, uh, our campus SRO, recorded ahead of time. He's just going to talk a little bit about some of the things I already touched on with um, building security and behavior and expectations um, of our students. Is it playing?
So um, one of the next things that we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about, which maybe you guys have seen some pictures or your kids have talked about it, um, is our hydroponic garden that we have behind the building. So this is something that um, was done several years ago before the renovations to the main part of the school. Um, and then due to the needs of equipment and stuff coming through the back part of the building, it had to come out. Um, so we've now started it all over from scratch with, uh, and we're partnered with Drake's Hydro Organic Garden. Um, they're located in Temple Terrace. Um, we, we do projects like this with schools and companies and businesses and even some different personal homeowners um, all around Tampa Bay. They've been around for a really long time. They come out and they're super knowledgeable. They come out here, they talk to the kids, they explain to them, you know, how to care for things. They've taught us quite a bit about how to care for this garden because it's a lot of work. Um, these are some of the first things that were grown um, sometime between January and the end of the school year last year. Uh, we grow all kinds of different things out there. Right now we have some watermelons going, okra. Um, okra, lots of okra. We have some lemongrass and a bunch of various different herbs and some lettuces, arugula, and things like that. Um, peppers, different peppers. We have a habanero, a couple habanero plants, bell peppers, banana peppers. So, you know, it, it's a really good opportunity for the kids to kind of learn about sustainability um, and how to, you know, how to care for something like this and how these kinds of systems work and the organic pesticides and things like that. Uh, but it's also a really good opportunity for them to kind of see like where food comes from. It's not just like the produce department at the grocery store, like it actually has to come from somewhere uh, and then be taken care of and then harvested and then transported and then treated and then produced with. So it kind of helps them connect, you know, I know the whole farm to table sort of situation really kind of helps them connect those dots a little bit better. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for them to, you know, to learn that whole process and to get to cook with things that they've actually been a part of growing. Um, we use, we utilize them over in Lake U Cafe whenever we can. We had boatloads of kale last year that we were doing kale Caesars, I think until it was coming out of our ears. We had kale, so much kale. Um, so many tomatoes. And, the, and so many tomatoes, yeah, yeah, so, so many tomatoes. Um, you know, and the, so the, it's, it's cool for the staff too, you know, the kids talk to their different, to their uh, teachers about it. The teachers come and they eat by lunch here, so they got to eat some of those items. We even did a little garden sale at one point where we were bagging up like collard greens and kale and tomatoes and herbs and we were selling them by the bag to the staff. Um, so it's good. It's a good way for us to be able to kind of turn around some of those things and put profit directly back into the program. Um, the SAC committee through the school is actually the they're the original kind of donators of the funds that got us started with the garden, which was awesome. So we took some students. Chef Cooper and I went to a SAC meeting. We talked to them about what we wanted to do, gave them all the information. The kids presented to them, and they said, "Yeah, we'll give you guys the money to start the garden." So uh, we're going to visit back with them again this year and ask for some regeneration funds because um, it really is you know it's, it's an invaluable experience for the kids that you know not being in, in an agriculture program specific agriculture to kind of get that part through through this as well so you have any questions about the garden so just with the garden each student will be in charge of one of the beds um, that, that are out there so we have um, four bed six per beds class per class period so we have six beds and then we have the two rows of towers. So we would say, you know, student Sam, he's in charge of this tower. And then Bill's in charge of this tower. And that they get graded on how well they can keep up everything, keeping the weeds out, getting the vegetables to grow, and so forth. Uh, so one of the other things that we are very proud of with our program um, are the competition wins that we do pretty much get consistently every year. Um, we, I mean, you know, let's be honest. Um, All right. We're very proud of, of the, our, our students' success. And we, uh, you know, we want to be able to get them out into more competitions, you know, more and more. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into not only prepping them for competition, but also getting them to the competition, actually competing and then coming home. Um, so those are things that, you know, Chef Cooper and I are working on, um, you know, adding that 101st hour to, to everything else that we um, have to work with in the program. Uh, but we want to be able to add more opportunities like that for the kids.
we know that not all students are going to want to compete and that's okay we would never push students to compete but those that have that competitive drive we'd like to try to foster that and coach them along um, but this is our uh, creative confections dessert competition that's actually hosted here every year um, and last year we our students won first place second place third place and people's choice so Lando Lakes swept the whole the whole thing um, so the, the cupcake trophy travels uh, to the school that wins people or wins first place or yeah first place so that's actually lived here for a while um, I think I took it to Wiregrass for one year when I was there it's touched almost every school it's, it has once, though at yeah, least one time at least one time. Been here a long. Time. Uh, <laughs> but that you know, that, but that's that's that speaks a lot to you know what Chef Cooper has grown um, with this with the program over the years, and what I've been able to come in and kind of help supplement you know supplement with um, you know the students they're the things that they come up with you know it's it's incredible. Um, they're you know their levels of creativity. We don't give them what to do. They, we give them an opportunity to come up with recipes and they cost it and they come up with what they want to do, um, you know, for their plating design. And we coach them, we work with them, but we don't do for them. We let them do it. Um, we may suggest changes that we know aren't going to work, possibly, uh, because we don't want them to fail and be discouraged. Um, but when they, whenever, whoever does win first place goes on to serve their dessert for, I think it was like 200 and usually like 230, 250 in that neighborhood every year. Uh, the competition is hosted by the Pasco Education Foundation and it's their annual charity event called the Cinderella Ball. We actually, can it. I say it? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually just got an email today. None of our students have heard yet, but uh, we just got our theme for the year and it's Cinderella goes to Havana. Havana. So that'll be an interesting theme. We always tell the students when they when Pasco Education Foundation gives us the theme, we tell the students and we let them run with it. So it'll be interesting to see what we can do with with Cuba, Havana. Uh, yeah, it's probably hard to see in there, and, and yeah. just because they know the theme doesn't mean they have to you know they don't follow, have it. To follow it. Um, but the one that came in third place, it, they have a it's a cowboy boot that they made out of chocolate. It was, it was Cinderella Goes Country last year. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little cowboy boot that they. Um, made by hand yep. okay uh, uh, out of chocolate which is really cool they wanted to include that they worked yeah. really hard to get the shape just right and um so yeah our, our first place winner was the dessert on the top yeah so we did prepare 250 of those and brought them to a country club over in trinity and, and this the we obviously we highly encourage our students to come with that team to come help us prepare and serve that dessert because they also go out to the dining room and serve the dessert to the to the attendees so it's a really, really cool opportunity. It's a black tie event. Uh, so it's really something unique that they get to experience. And no matter who wins, we always pull students from all of the culinary programs to go and help. So even if we don't win, <laughs> even when we win, um, but we'll, pull, we'll, we'll make sure that we have students that go to help other programs because that's, that's you know, our, our programs are all just, you know, we're one big community in the district. There's only five, four, four, culinary. four schools in the district that have culinary. So it's a really cool opportunity for them. And then we are looking at another competition that we haven't told the kids about yet. Um, something It's still waiting on all the details, but it's something about creating a handheld. That's all we really know, like a handheld for the for Universal, that's what it was. It's for Universal Studios. So it'll go through like several rounds, and then if you get to the final round, you go to Universal. I think the top five teams get to go to Universal and make their handheld, and then customers buy tickets and they get to try them all, and then they vote, and then that team, the winning team's handheld, gets served at the cart for a period of time. Um, so we're still waiting on more of those details. We, that's really about all we know, um, but we really want to get the kids in on that one. Um, it's, it's really cool, and that's the first time they're doing it. So we're going to try to work on that one this year too. We, we, we do have it, there's one more too. This is really towards the um, the seniors this year, but uh, Aroma Joe's across the street. Oh, yeah. We are going to do a competition in house um, on making up a new beverage to be the Land Lakes High School beverage at Aroma Joe's. So the kids will be involved with um, making up those drinks, and then we'll get to taste some of them and then vote on the best flavor one. We're going to put it out to the yearbook staff and the student council, and they're going to put it out to the high school level school student body vote on which one that they would like to see them ask out. Um, 
but we're gonna the, our students we're gonna come up with the flavor combinations and then come up with the names for them, and then that's what we'll submit to student council, and then they'll have to do So that's something cool, you know, to look forward to, you know, to be part of to be a part of having the mass cut. That's a great question. That is on my mental docket. So I'll mention it right now. Thank you. So we actually, this has been years in the planning. Have, so years, several years ago, Chef Cooper and I planned together when I was still at Wiregrass, planned a, uh, a culinary tour to Italy through a tour company that does educational tours. Um, it's what they do. They do language immersion tours. They were starting to do culinary tours. So we booked one to Northern Italy. We went, it was amazing, life-changing experience for the two of us who've never been abroad like that really. Not to, I've never been to Europe. The, so. Not to Italy, yeah. yeah. So it was awesome for us and it was cool to see through the kids' eyes. Some students from Land O'Lakes went, mostly Land O'Lakes, I think. I had a couple of grass. grass. Yeah, it was a great time. There was like 10 of us, nine, 10 of us, something like that. And, um, it's funny too, actually, like a side note, some of those kids that met other students on that trip, they're still friends with them and they still chat. We still chat with some of the other mm -hmm. parents that were chaperones for those kids on the group. We still chat with them all the time. We messaged with our Italian tour guide, yeah. Sonia, all of, like randomly was like, hey, Sonia, how are you? So it, the, those relationships that you build through trips like that are really cool. But anyway, we're planning, uh, we've been planning one to France for like four years now. We kind of keep pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off because of COVID. Well, they're back on, and we've now have we've now officially booked it for. I let Janai decide because Janai was the only one that hung on. What did you decide? Twenty four, right? Summer of twenty four because that's her senior year. She was the only one left on the trip at the time, and I said you can have twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four. You decide. <laughs> so she chose twenty four because that will be the summer after her she graduates. So we are going to France on a culinary trip in two thousand and twenty four. Um, it will probably be June, could be July. We don't we don't get dates, specific dates on the trip until much closer, uh, until, the, until the company books the flights and does all that. Um, but just overall big picture how it works, it's, it's mostly an all-inclusive, like one price, and that includes all of their lodging, most of the food, um, all the transportation, the flights, all of the admissions to the tours and the activities that we do while we're on the trip. Really, the only money that they needed is for any souvenirs, that, additional fund, um, is uh, if you know for souvenirs or any extra like snacks or meals or things that they really kind of want. Um, but it was really a pretty much an all-inclusive situation with with that trip uh, to Italy. It's going to be the same with the one to France. So um, I will be putting out some information. We're probably going to do another like recruitment sort of meeting where we'll have a whole thing just like this, but it'll be just about that. Um, so stay tuned to that. If you do have the Facebook, if you do have a Facebook account, please join the Facebook page. Because we're going to put stuff like that out there. We'll send it out through Remind. We'll send it out through the children. That might be the, maybe the most pointless one. Um, maybe not everyone home. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so we're going to try and put it out as many ways as possible. So so stay tuned for that. Um, we'll host another meeting. We'll say probably maybe before Thanksgiving break. Yeah. We'll try to have another meeting about that to give out all the details. But something to think about. Thanks for asking that. Yeah, because I'm just trying to get her to have other people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So from the time from the time you book, I think it's ninety nine dollars to reserve the spot, and then you can pay monthly all the way up until you create a payment plan with the tour company. They they come up with all of that for you. Um, you can pay it in one month, so I'm gonna be done with it, or you can just monthly payment. There's fundraising options. The students can put out a link to, or, you know, to friends and family and say, "Hey, donate to my trip to France," so they can raise funds that way. Um, so there's, there's, you know, there's, there's multiple avenues in which you know that you guys can get some help with those trips. Um, so that's a really good question. I was going to actually say that real quick. So the way that works is, um, so really anybody can go on the trip. It doesn't just have to be students. So some we've had families that have paid for mom and or dad and the student and even if they want brother, anybody can go uh, as a paying member. So, but for the chaperones, we 
Unfortunately, the chaperone's bomb should be wrong. Um, <laughs> we still pay, so. We still pay a little, yeah. But we get one per six students. So right now, one of us is going. <laughs> we'll fight for it. Uh, but that, yeah, so it's so that that is kind of how it works. But yeah, anybody can go. Yes, there is an adult price. Yeah. There's an adult price, and then there's a student price. There's an adult supplement because of the way the rooming works with adults. So because they put fewer adults in one room to, now, if you the way it works with them is if, if you are going, so say you two are gonna go, they'll let you they'll put you two in a room together if that's what you want. Um, otherwise they put the kids in rooms of up to four, and then the adults I think in rooms of up to two. So there's an adult supplement. It's not a lot more for an adult, but there is it is it's a little bit. That's a good question. I think the cutoff age might be twenty-three for the adult. I don't think it's eighteen, I think it's twenty-three. Oh, for the, the price. To be yeah. an adult. Right, right, right. For the adult price. Yeah. So we, last time when we went, we had um, someone from, we had two people from the district office who also, who also went. They were paying, paying customers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jill. Yep. Jill, no, Jill and her sister, and then the other person from one of us. Oh, Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin, yep. So did they do everything? All the, everything. Yep. Everything. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the beauty of it is, so when you go on the trip, I mean, I guess it's some people, if, if you if you want to go on the trip and kind of do your own thing, it's not, this isn't the type of thing you would want to do. So if you go through this tour company and go on this group, this group trip, everybody does have to do the itinerary, right? So everything's planned for you. They have local tour guides that do all of the stuff with us. They get our tickets and give us the tickets. They're there with us. They go, I mean, every single, we yeah. made friends with the bus driver, the coach bus driver. We were good friends with him, Antonino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he literally had an espresso machine at the front of the bus. Yeah, he did. So he made it <laughs> We're at high right now. That bus through the mountains. Yeah. Uh, 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 but yeah, yes. So so you do, you follow the whole itinerary. There were a couple of students, I think, that even a, even had an arrangement where they were traveling somewhere else in Italy or somewhere and wanted to go on the trip, so they arranged it with the tour company and they met us in Italy. So they didn't travel over with us, but they met us there, went on the tour. And oh, then from, I think from you, Croatia. Yeah, from Croatia. They went, right. on, they went on a family so trip to Croatia. There's, there the are place. things, the other students, they, they turned it into other trips also. So there's ways there's ways to, to kind of alter that. I think even one girl stayed there with her yeah, family. Yeah, her family. Her family <laughs> met us there, and she stayed with them and said, well, there's, yeah. there's different things you can do. It's pretty cool, really. I mean, it's, we were both worried about it because it's, it's a lot, you know, uh, taking kids all over. It's, it's it different being great. with the kids here for 55 minutes and totally being with them 24 hours a day for totally 13 different. days. I think we <laughs> it was good. One night with a group of, of girls that were yeah. a little bit rowdy. Chef Cooper. Yeah, but I mean, you know, usually <laughs> the kids that go on things like that, I, you know, yeah. they're usually the ones that want to, and they, you know, they're there to have a good time, and they're yeah. usually the ones. Um, it was, it was awesome. Lots of good food. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, this, this French, the French trip, you see a lot of the big stuff. You'll see all the big, you know, the big sites, but a lot of the activities that they have booked for it are specifically. It is a culture and cuisine tour. So their stuff is food related. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Chef Cooper or myself? I'm yeah. sorry, I just have one more. No. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you, uh, so do they go to the artist institute to like, because I'm actually going to go back for this last year and I know that they have the singers like showcase like their. Do you ever take the kids there? For that? So we haven't actually taken the kids to art institute. Yeah. I don't believe, but the call the, the different programs and colleges do come out to the campus to do, not just like recruiting conversations with our older students, but I'll also go out and do demos and things like that. Okay. Um, but we haven't taken the kids out to. We've taken them to Kaiser in years past because Kaiser is a culinary program, but we haven't. I'll get with you later. Yeah, yeah. Send me an email. We can arrange something for sure. Awesome. We are planning some field trips. We can, we can do yep. that now again. So uh, we plan on going to like Emily Arena. Um, so far, the Green Door in Dade City. So those are those are two things that are on our radar to, to start. Yep. Yep, we want to get people in to show them what's out there, and we want to get them out there to see what's out there. So that's that's one of our other big goals this year is to get them exposed to more stuff. 
Um, these are all of our remind codes for both Chef Cooper and myself. So for except for the you see the ones that say nutrition, most like I, I mean nobody in here I don't think is gonna be in that class. But those are all of our, our class codes for Remind 101. So as as our the parents of our students, we encourage you to also uh, join our remind because we send out reminders all the time. We send texts um, to the students to remind them of things. But if you're on there as well, you'll see those reminders and it can help us kind of guide the sheep to, <laughs> to the promised land. Maybe don't forget your uniform. Yeah, so don't clean bring it. your uniform tomorrow, yeah. study for your quiz bring tomorrow, it. things yeah. like that. And it gives them a quick line to us if they have a quick question about something. It comes right to our phones. We don't see their phone number. They don't see ours. It's all logged and tracked by the district. So it's a very safe platform for us to quickly text back and forth with kids and parents. And that's one of the ways that our remind uh, about caterings go out also. I regret not putting it on this slide. Um, but I will put it on the Facebook page. Or if, if you're in joining remind right now, um, your kids, is any, any of you guys in here in the catering remind? Can give it to your parents if they want it. You guys can access the remind code for that. Um, so we do have a specific remind course for catering announcements. Okay. Any other questions? No, that's fine. Period one, that's culinary two. So you're going to want this one up here. This is culinary two under Chef Cooper. Okay. We'll leave this up so when you guys come up at the end, if you want to, if you want to snap a picture of the can. So if you want to type it in real quick, you can. Uh, the code for the catering remind is at L O L H S C A for catering. At L O L H S C A. And then one other thing I just want to mention real quick, we've been telling the kids, we ordered some logoed uh, drawstring bags because kids have issues like shoving their uniforms in their backpacks. So we ordered some. Um, we are putting them out on pre-order right now because they're being manufactured and then they're going to ship them to us in a couple of weeks. Um, but they're $10 for a large 16 by 20 drawstring bag with the culinary logo on it. So if you'd like to pre-purchase one and reserve one for your student, you can do that through Acorn. So like through where you pay the student fees, there's a button there with the image of that bag and you can pre-purchase one and like the, when they come in, we'll give them right to the students. And then whatever extra ones we have, we'll obviously sell to the students. Yes, so we are, that's the next thing on my mental list is to figure out what we want to do for design on shirts and, and start getting uh, a design. Uh, we'll probably try to do something where we come up with multiple designs and then let the kids vote on what they want. So that takes and just really quick, uh, this is a paper I was telling you about for the hours. So the students would get this paper and every time they're here, we record that they're here and then it's their responsibility yes. to take this paper to they Mrs. Colon. Right, they have to track their own. I can track the work hours, the 100 work hours, but this one they have to do on their own. They get this paper signed and bring it to Mrs. Colon in the career specialist office. There is a PDF version of that document available on the school website. I think on some of our student services, you'll see the community service form. And there are also printed copies in student services that the kids can come by and grab it. Or they'll come to us. So if anybody has any questions about the bag, you let us know. If you are going to the Facebook pages up here. Uh, otherwise, we really appreciate you guys taking your time out of your evening to come uh, listen to us drone on for the last hour. Uh, we really want to, you know, kind of bridge the gap of communication between the program and the parents because that's really the key to not just the students being successful, but also the program. And so that's super important to both Chef Cooper and I, uh, the administration. This is a major point of pride for the district and even the state. Um, so we would, you know, we really appreciate, you know, your students being with us and we know that it's a financial and time commitment on your behalf. So we want you to know we appreciate all of you for your support. That's it. We'll leave this up here. If anybody wants to go up and snap a picture, you may. Does anyone online have, am I muted? Thank you. No. Does anyone online have any questions? Yeah, Miss Little, Miss Little there. Oh, there's some in the chat. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good night.